Welcome to a quick tip tutorial in Anime Studio Pro. In this tutorial, we are going to cover relative keyframing. Relative keyframing, I believe, was a feature that was added back in Anime Studio 9 or 9.5. It's a very helpful feature, but it can also create some real problems if you're not careful. I'll explain both ways. Here we have an animation of a character that is walking, jumps, and, oh, let's see that again. Right here. Nope, not quite making that box. Well, what we can do with relative keyframing, well, before relative keyframing, I should say, technically what you'd have to do is you'd have to go through every single keyframe on this horizontal movement here. So let's say right here, move that up. Oh shoot, yep, I gotta move that. Make sure that lines up, okay. Yeah, as you can see, pretty time consuming process. Even right here, he's just standing still. Nope, I wanna make a move up there. Yeah, that can create some pretty big problems. Well, when relative keyframing was introduced, that pretty much solved all of those problems there. If I go into my, my horizontal movement that I have here, and I click relative keyframing, select the channel so that all the keyframes in this channel are highlighted, all I have to do, go to my layer transform tool, click, hold shift, and just drag everything up, watch what happens when I release my mouse all the keyframes moved up. And that is relative keyframing. So now when I push play, jumps over the box, perfect. Now something that can be a pitfall when using relative keyframing is not knowing that you have it checked and say you have these two accidentally highlighted, but you're coming over here to this spot right here. You're saying, okay, right here, I want him to land just a little bit further away from the box. So let me just drag these over. Well, as you saw here, relative keyframing is still selected. So let's see what happens when I push play. Uh oh, what the heck? I wasn't, I wasn't messing with that. He's moving, why is he in the middle of the box? Well, basically when you have anything selected with relative keyframing on, it is going to move those keyframes. So anywhere that these two keyframes are selected, whoa, look at that impossible jump. It's gonna mess up your whole animation. If you're not careful, it'll it'll make some uh, hours of changing and fixing your timing all over again because relative keyframing messed it all up. So whenever you're using relative keyframing, have it checked. Whenever you're not using it, don't check it because I can easily still have both these keyframes highlighted, have it the normal way, I slide it over, perfect. Works just the same without relative keyframing. These can even be highlighted, won't affect those. It's only gonna affect the keyframes that are highlighted. Another quick example is this pretty complex animation here. Have this lady in her car pulling up. Well, actually, you know what? I didn't want her to be in a hover car. I just was too lazy and didn't want to animate the wheels, but Oh man, I created this whole animation, it's super complex. How the heck do I fix this so that it doesn't look like she's in some sort of hover car? Well, same thing. Go to your channel, highlight all the layers, select your transform layer tool, go to the car, which is my movement layer here, and hold shift and click down to right about there. That looks pretty good. Oh, what happened? forgot to click my relative keyframing. So, not a big deal. But as you can see here, it moved everything in the draw, but everything else here in the normal pass frame one and on is still gonna have this high keyframing layer right there. So I'm gonna just go ahead and drag all that down. As you can see, dragged all my other keyframes down. Perfect. Now we don't even know if she's in a hover car. This has been a quick tip for relative keyframing. Um, there's many other different ways that you can use it. Be sure to like and subscribe and stick around for the next quick tips.